My name is Cody Brown, and you've got to meet my family. I'm a polygamist, but we're not the polygamists you think you know. I have three awesome wives, Mary, Janelle, and Christine. And I have 12 wonderful children. Well, my family's on the verge of a huge change. Because love should be multiplied, not divided. Y'all remember that? My, how time has passed. And how soon we forget. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Realities TV, the brown girl perspective. We are back this Sunday with Sister Wives, Season 17, Episode 7, The Failed Priest. That has more than one connotation and we're going to get into it. Here we go. So we open up with Cody driving to officiate his friend Brian's wedding. Now he mentions that this is a time when it's peace and quiet. He's driving across the Texas terrain and he has time to think without any wives with him. He mentions that Robin was supposed to be with him, but they something something about making sure the children are taken care of. Uh, couldn't the two adult children who live with you do that? I mean, are they so developmentally arrested that they couldn't possibly take care of two ch children under the age of 11? Just asking. He says that there's only about 11,000 cases of COVID in the country and that he feels that it's time that he should emerge. Don't emerge to sit outside and talk to your daughter. Don't emerge to help her move to college. Don't emerge to go to her surgery, but emerge to officiate your friend Brian's wedding. So, of course, we cut back to Janelle and she brings that up. That he and Sassass, and if you're just joining me, Sassass is Robin, still observe very strict COVID rules, but here he is traveling to officiate a wedding. Right. We also go back to Sassass and she hopes that on this trip he can do some healing because as she says, he's been a really angry guy lately. No, here's what you mean, Robin. You mean that you thought that the queen wife, you, would be acceptable to everyone, that they would just say, okay, she's the favorite, she's in the number one position, and we're okay with that. And that you would just reap the rewards of them all feeling like shit and basically having to deal with his crap. But not you. You would be the one that was held up as the way, the truth, and the life. Y'all, if you're a Christian, you know exactly what that means. But it didn't quite happen that way, did it, Robin? You didn't get what you bargained for. You got other people to sort of hold you up and make you feel special. But when it was your turn to have to deal with his stuff, because now you're the queen wife, now you want to whine about it and say he's angry. Get out of here. We cut to Christine having a sit down with Truly and kind of getting her idea, her take on telling her that she and her dad are getting divorced. Now, I love this because I don't think a lot of parents go back and ask their children, how are you feeling? They sort of wait for the children to tell them. And the way that she knows that it's kind of time to do this is that as she's packing boxes and getting things ready to move, she notices that Truly has started to pack back boxes and just do it on her own. Like Christine did not say, hey, Truly, you know, we're moving in a couple months. You might want to start packing. She just went in and happened to see Truly doing it so she sits down with truly in her room and she asks her you know how you doing is everything okay and I must say truly very eloquently expresses herself and says at first she was really really sad she was really upset about it but you know she just needed a day to take a step back and think about the fact that you know mom was not happy I saw that earlier than mom even told me she was unhappy and so, you know, you getting a divorce is sad, but I'm okay with it. I'm feeling better. Let me just say this. I was a teacher for 19 years, and I taught very young children. I taught from pre-K to first grade. I even taught high school. My very first year teaching, I taught high school. Younger children are the ones who will always show and tell what they are feeling. They know they know, they know, they know. They may not come out and tell you in words, 
hey, I know you're sad, mom, and I know that it's that you and dad aren't getting along. Like, they may not say that, but it'll come out in actions. Sometimes it will come out around you. Sometimes it will come out at school. And so when the teacher says, hey, what's going on? How's everything at home? They may share things with their teachers or their friends or a counselor before they sit down because they don't want to lay that at your feet. Children are very protective, right? But, you know, a mom and a child, it's like heartbeats, I kind of describe it that way. Moms and children are like heartbeats. And if that heartbeat at all seems off, your child is going to feel that skip in that heartbeat and she's going to know something or he's going to know something's wrong. And so truly says, I knew this earlier than you told me. Right. So we just always have to give kids more credit than, you know, hey, they're not going to know if we don't say anything. They, They do. They know. She asked her if she went ahead and reached out to anyone, if she made any calls, and truly says that she did reach out to her grandma and to Aspen to talk about it because she basically just didn't know what to do, right? And she says that they encouraged her, they talked her through it, but it was also a time that she realized that she was the last to know, and she even refers to being the last to know as sort of a betrayal. That's a heavy word for a young girl right? She felt betrayed. Now, she didn't say betrayed by Christine. She didn't even say betrayed by Cody. She just said, I felt like it was a betrayal that I was the last to know and that she would have liked to have known sooner because it was kind of like, you know, we're moving in three months. Whereas if they had told her earlier, she might have had more time to kind of deal with that. And I'm thinking maybe she would have thought, yeah, I would have had more time to play with Ari and Saul. I would have had more time to say goodbye to some other friends. Maybe if she is seeing other friends, she would have had time to maybe spend with her sisters or, you know, anything. She just would have liked to have had time. So I just say again that she was so good at expressing herself and really being honest and understanding that her mom did not want to hurt her because she's so young. Like that was actually my favorite part of the conversation that she said, I understand why you didn't tell me because I'm the youngest. Yeah, let me tell you, when Christine said like last week or a couple weeks ago that Truly was smart, I mean, I had no idea how smart and how wonderful this little girl is. And she has pretty much earned, just like Christine has earned Queen Christine, Truly has earned Princess Truly today. She gets her crown because she was all about that. So we get back to Asshat talking about this conversation and he says that he feels marginalized and the marriage feels marginalized and like Christine is blowing him off and then he says that he feels like truly is being led to blow him off. This statement says more to me about Cody and what he thinks of his children. In this instance, what he thinks of truly. Truly is young. Truly is not dumb. Meaning she has her own mind. She can decide some things. Just because you keep those kids that live with you most of the time in this little baby box, truly has been allowed to express herself and talk through her feelings. So she has a bigger grasp on things that I think go on around her than your other children that are with you every day. So it really kind of made me mad. Because I think that what all the signs point to is that Christine is not the kind of mother to keep her kids so deep in the dark or keep their heads so far in the sand that they cannot decide for themselves how they feel. So yeah, Christine does not do that. Truly can be impressed upon. She is a youngster, but she also has feelings that are her own and she is being raised as an individual. And I don't think that Christine's leading her to blow you off. You're doing that, sir. You're the one who's not spending time with her. So if I have a choice, I'm going to choose the person and the people who give me joy, who bring me sunshine, who want to be around me more than 50% of the time and not have that 50% of the time be a result of them getting a divorce. So there's that. So then she, you know, truly basically busts him out. She basically pulls the receipts and says, you know, I did talk to my dad about this. Um, he came over. He asked, my, he asked me how I was. I said, I'm okay. And he said, good. He said, okay. And she says it pretty much didn't go much past that. So boom, drop the mic. There you go, Cody. Whatever. Being led to blow you off. No, I think she's blowing you off on her own. 
We come back after commercial break and Cody can't come up with anything to say at his friend's wedding because his own failure at his marriage. His, his mind is cloudy. You know, he's not even sure if he supports marriage anymore. And he wants to basically tell his friend Brian, you know, I don't know if you want to do this. Are you sure? And he even says that he asks him the day of his wedding at the wedding venue, are you sure she's the one? And he's like, yeah, man, she's the one. Like, I didn't just marry her because her dad was like the head of the church. That, that, that was you. I didn't just marry her because I felt like I had to have more than one wife to get to the celestial kingdom. That's not my faith. That was you. I'm marrying this woman, Judith, because I love her and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. And it has nothing else to do with anything except love. It's not an arrangement or a business deal like your three marriages that are going down the tubes. Right. And he probably Brian wanted to say to him, if you'd be honest with yourself and just stop playing games with Mary, Janelle and Christine, although Christine is not really allowing you to play a game, you could just say to them and be honest. I really just want to be with Robin. I want to be in a monogamous relationship with her. The rest of you can do what you want. Just say it, Cody. Come on. We all know that's what you're thinking. But you can't say that because then that would be admitting failure. And of course, that's not really your strong suit. So anyway. Janelle wonders about his spirituality and where he really is, you know, in in officiating this wedding. He always enjoys officiating the wedding, but she's just not quite sure where he is spiritually. But then, of course, Queen Christine breaks it down and she says, you know, it's interesting that he's officiating a wedding, considering that his marriage has failed. And she proceeds to go through each marriage and kind of give a one sentence statement about where they all are. So she says... Mary's relationship with him isn't great. Mine is over. Janelle's is rocky. But the best part of giving that list was the smirk on Christine's face when she says, maybe officiating this wedding will make him give some great wedding advice. Not likely, Christine. Not likely at all. But I love the smirk. That was great. Christine, to me, is slowly turning into what we like to call in the African-American community, a sister girl. She is slowly turning into a sister girl. I'm about to give her her sister girl card. I'm about to. Cody arrives at the wedding day. And uh, in true asshat fashion, in his asshatness, he says, I don't know what to say for the vows. And if I mess this up, I'm only partly to blame. Well, I mean, does a narcissist ever take blame for anything? The fact that he says partly is actually surprising, but it was pretty much just another way to not take the entire blame for not preparing to officiate your friend's wedding. Weddings are a big deal. I have one coming up. And believe me, the pastor that we have doing our wedding is so on top of it that I can't imagine he'd ever say, I'm not prepared. I don't know what to say for vows. Yeah, if anyone ever thinks that they're going to hire this numb nut to do their, their nuptials, please call me so I can talk you out of it. Please. So he can't even get the wedding started. And I look at the bride and she looks so confused as to what they were thinking and asking him to do this. I think he makes like three or four false starts. Dearly beloved, here we are. Dearly beloved, I'm nervous, are you? Dearly beloved, like just say it already. All right, just say it. So as he's starting to get it going, you can tell that he's bringing his own problems into their wedding day. Now, that to me was upsetting also because I don't care what's going on for you at home. I am having my princess day. He is having his prince day. Don't bring your stuff into my wedding. Don't bring your bad juju in to curse my wonderful nuptials. Leave it at the door. So he starts telling them that they need to make sure that they compromise and communicate and negotiate. Where was all this compromise, negotiation, and communication when it came to all the marriages outside of Sassass? Because I didn't see no compromising. I didn't see no negotiating. And the communication is for shit. You don't communicate with anyone. You talk and expect everyone else to listen and bow down to what you say. If that is your version of communication, Cody Brown, this in there is why your marriages are failing. 
And I got a little piece of juice, I'm going to say, at the end of this video. Got a little piece of juice, but we're going to hold on for that. So rightfully, when we go back to Christine, Gwen and Isabel have found out that he has left to go officiate this wedding in Oklahoma. Now, remember I said that he and Sassas keep very strict COVID rules. So you could not leave to go sit outside and talk to your daughter. You couldn't leave to help her pack for college. But you go and officiate this wedding. So now Gwen and Isabel are mad. Christine says Gwen is mad and Isabel is heartbroken. And Isabel says, how can he even fathom or be a way to officiate a wedding and not help, he, help me? Does he not know how much I need him or needed him? But he can justify going to a wedding. Go to a wedding, not to a surgery. As Hat gives the excuse about time. It was a time thing. I was gone for four days to Brian's wedding, but it would have been six weeks with Isabel for her surgery. Hmm. So this, since you're going to start to whine like a biatch, Cody, I'm going to talk to you like one. Let me lay down some facts for you. Maybe you didn't know, but there's these things called planes. And guess what? They leave every day at different times. And you can fly back and forth if you want. You can get on one and go someplace. And guess what? Come back from that place. Ooh. So when you fly somewhere, you don't have to stay six weeks. You could fly anywhere you want. And you can stay for two days or four days, since that seems to be your limit. And then guess what? You can come home. Don't believe me? Call the airline of your choice and check it out. It's true. I know it seems wild, but it's true. I know you're used to driving everywhere, but planes were invented a long, long, long time ago, and you can use them. You can go back and forth. It's really cool. It's really cool. You should check it out. Then he tries to get all William Shakespeare and says, Christine protesteth too much. Yes, Cody, if you're listening, you quoted Shakespeare. So I just want to warn you, don't go around thinking you made that up on your own because you didn't. Christine says, I'm mad. Well, you know what, Christine? So am I. And she says, he is not my problem. I'm not married to him anymore. And I'm so glad I'm not. Me too, Christine. Here, here. Me too. I am so glad that you have gotten yourself out of this unbearable, controlling, toxic situation. I think you are going to be, as a matter of fact, because we know where you are now, I know and I'm glad that you got out. Not just before the fighting started, but before your mental health started to suffer. I would argue that your mental health did start to suffer a little bit from the time that you knew you didn't want to be with him. But I'm just glad that you got out and did not keep yourself in the same place that Mary seems to be, which is a place of denial. It is not just a river in Egypt, honeys. It is not. So we go back to Cody Coyote Pass, where Janelle is trying to level her fifth wheel, and Gabe is out helping his mom. He's being a good son. But as usual, asshat is being an asshat. And because he can't really yell at Christine right now, and he can't really yell at anybody, he's taking it out on this situation more directly at Gabe. Don't turn on the automatic level. Like, that's nothing to really yell about. We can't get this thing leveled. So basically, he just feels like it's another thing he can't control. Because this, this fifth wheel has no feelings. It has no heart. It's not going to bow to your whim, Cody. So if it's not leveling, it's not leveling. We do want it to be safe for Janelle and Savannah to be in. But don't be yelling at Gabe because you can't get something to work. Because we all know that you're supposed to be able to wave your hand and magic should happen. Sorry. Not this time. Basically, Gabe says he doesn't really talk to his father much anymore. And the sad part is, it's only because he stood up for himself. He really only stood up for himself, asked some questions about what the hell his dad was doing, and now he doesn't talk to him. You treated my mom bad, and now Cody doesn't talk to him. Well, that's what happens, Cody. Sometimes people stand up to other people who are bullies. Live with it. It's okay. It's okay, Gabe, because see, here's my advice. I would say follow in your brother Logan's footsteps. I would say live your life, get married if you want, don't if you don't want to, stay true and loyal and take care of your mom and let go of the rest. 
It's hard, but you will be so much better for it in the end. Listen, family is assigned, but it does not mean you have to like them all. The people in your family are just humans like everybody else. You don't have to like them because they're your family. Can y'all tell that I know of which I speak? I'm just saying. Christine is loving that Janelle is only like a mile away and has come over for coffee and breakfast and does her laundry there. So they are for real, true, ride or die. I love it. But then we cut to Robin, who says that she goes out and sits on the bench to hear the angels sing. And Janelle's not home. She would see her if she ran into her and she'd say hello, but she's not there. Girl, come on. If Christine is a mile away, you are probably not that far away from Janelle either. And considering that Janelle has a car that has to be parked outside of the fifth wheel, I think you know when she's there and when she's not there. So so not so that you don't seem like the wedge that you are in this family and saying that you would go see Janelle. Really, Robin? If I ran into her, where are you going to run into her? Walking up the hill towards the bench? Get out of here. Girl, you are not fooling nobody. Now, Mary, having only appeared in the episode twice, I think, reiterates that the property has to be paid off before they can build. But it's really the furthest thing from her mind. And I think that's very telling. If she's not thinking about the property, Christine doesn't want the property, it's just really telling. And, I, and again, I have a little piece of juice I'm going to put at the very end of this video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little video that I want you to stick around for. But what I have found out is that Janelle has sold her piece of the property back to Cody as well. Mm, stay around, stay around, because I have proof of that. Janelle has sold her piece of Coyote Pass back to Cody. Christine said that she, what she would like to do is, you know, give the family back the land, sell the house, and keep the proceeds. She wants nothing to do with the property, and she has said this before. So, of course, when Cody comes over, he says that they need to have some kind of custody agreement for Truly, and that Utah is a state that hates him and could make it very difficult for him to see Truly. But if you saw my last video, right, we know that that's not even really happening, that they are not co-parenting very well. She calls, she gives him little updates, like she got student of the month, or an A on a spelling test, you know, or something like that. That's kind of the furthest that their conversation goes and co-parenting is not really what is happening, right? So when speaking of selling the house, he thinks that they should sell and get, that she should sell and give that money to the family to pay off the property. And that way Janelle can build. Again, this is why Christine is about to get her sister card because she uses her sister voice to say, I won't be giving him any money for my house. I'm going to say that again. I won't be giving him any money for my house. Say that, Christine. Say that. Cody then puts her business in the street and says he and Robin gave her the down payment because she couldn't qualify. Skr, skr. So it's not family money when you and Robin give the down payment, but it's the family's house even though she's been paying the mortgage. Somebody got to help me with that. That's just the world according to, to Cody. That's all that is. The law, the real estate, according to Cody. Anyway, then he becomes armchair divorce attorney and tries to tell her that if she doesn't have a 50-50 custody agreement with him, she, meaning truly, basically becomes ward of the state and that they own her. Okay, stop, because I had to look this up. First of all, that is not true. Cody does not know what he is talking about. From my understanding, when truly is 12, she can decide that she can live with one parent or the other. She can decide who has sole custody. Now, at the time of this filming, she was probably 10 or 11, but still, because she can express herself, the judge will still ask her what she feels. 
Okay. At 10, she can say definitely, or I'm sorry, 12, she can say definitely, I would like to live with mom and dad and they have sole custody. When you're a little younger though, they will still pull you in and ask you how you're feeling. If you have a preference, then they will put all that into how they decide what happens. So she does not have to have 50-50. As a matter of fact, she could want 50-50. And I believe a judge could say, not going to work that way. Because what she tells the judge, what Cody tells the judge, what truly tells the judge, then helps him decide or she decide what that split would be. So yeah, I, I didn't understand him trying to basically scare her into this 50-50 uh, custody. Now, if I am wrong, please feel free to tell me in the comments. Just be nice about it. I'm not an attorney and whatever, but allegedly, I believe that's how it goes. Again, if I am wrong, please tell me in the comments. I don't care about you correcting me. I'm, I'm all open for that. Just be nice about it. Be respectful about it and be respectful to anyone else who comments. Okay. So then he says that he is going to get a room for her at one of the house. Oh, wait. He corrects himself. One of the houses. Nope, nope. There's only one house because basically I don't even remember who Mary is. So yeah, there's only one house, right? Let me just say this. I'm going to talk to Mary for a moment. So, and this is not me being a fan of Mary, but I just want to talk to her for a moment. Come in close, Mary. Come, come close. Girl, you have proved your point. You have proven that you can go through hell and come out unscathed. You win. You are a better woman than me and a lot of people. Leave. Okay, go ahead, Mary. You can go ahead and sit back. Okay, it's not me and you anymore. I just wanted to pull you in close and tell you that in your ear. I want you to hear that. But of course, in saying this, in the next episode, Mary is sitting with Robin and Robin is begging Mary to hold on and rebuild with her. Child, even though I just whispered that in Mary's ear, Mary is not going anywhere. She is staying because there's a check. And she's also stay staying because she feels like she has scorned Cody by letting the catfish come in and r disrupt their marriage. She's stuck. The tears that she's crying are the tears of feeling trapped by her own imprisonment of her mind. And the false hope that now that he's mad at Christine, she'll move up the ladder. But guess what? You're still not in the rotation because the rotation doesn't exist. And Cody has made sure of that. Not at Christine's because they're, they're getting a divorce. Not at Janelle's because she lives in a fifth will. Not at your house because he don't even remember who you are. So the only place that he lives, stays, goes, feels comfortable, feels confirmed, is in control is at Robin's McMansion. Oh my goodness. I want to take a moment to read a comment that I got from Taylor M. And I'm ending with this comment because I think it says perfectly what I want to say about all of this as a whole. So Taylor M., if you're listening again, I want to thank you for this comment. I want to thank everybody for their comments. But this one jumped out at me this week. She says, Taylor M says, Cody thinks the allegiance to Cody should come first in every wife and child of his. And if not, then he won't leave you. Anyone being quote unquote disloyal isn't worthy of his love. He even apologized to Christine for his love being conditional and said that's how polygamy works. He gets to love or unlove you whenever he sees fit. Absolutely. That is it. That is it. If you are not showing allegiance to him, you and your kids become people he will not deal with. It does not matter if your daughter is going to college and he has no problem with her. He has a problem with you. Therefore, he has a problem with all. It does not matter if your sons would like to move girlfriends in so that COVID doesn't get spread. If you don't agree with him on that, he doesn't want to deal with you and he doesn't want to deal with the sons. That's how it works. Why haven't we heard from Mariah? But her name now is Leon. I wonder why we haven't heard from her. It's okay that we haven't because we also haven't heard from Logan. I think it's the smartest thing. Go live your life. 
go and be happy and free and don't worry about all of this stuff going on. I think that uh, Logan is getting married. If it's not today, maybe yesterday or tomorrow, something like that. But congratulations, Logan. I also want to say before I go, thank you so, so much as I end. Thank you so much to the subscribers that have added to my channel. I had a goal of 300 subscribers by tonight's episode and I did it. Not only did I get 300, I'm actually over 400. I thank everybody who would send me little messages to tell me to look at my numbers going up. Guys, this is so much fun to stand and talk to you. And I thank you so much for watching my videos, for subscribing to my channel. Keep sharing, keep subscribing, keep coming back. Like I always say, it can only get better. I also say that if there's something you want to do, go ahead and do it. That is what I am doing. There is room for everybody. Love you. Peace. See you next week. Unless I have a video in the interim that I want to show y'all. Stay tuned just a little bit longer to see the receipt for the fact that Janelle has sold her piece of Coyote Pass back to Cody. See you next week. Bye. Dad didn't say to kick me out. Mom decided to kick me out because I wasn't going anywhere in life and she wanted me to grow up and be an adult. So that's why she kicked me out. It was one of the best things she did for me. Do your mom and dad still talk? Yes, mom and dad still talk. Does your mom still own a part of Coyote Pass? No, she sold it back to dad.